Well, if you missed the last episode with Ryan and I, we looked ahead to matches between K-League teams and teams from the ASEAN in both the AFC Champions League Elite and the AFC Champions League 2. Well, we have two games coming up this week, one in each competition. Ryan, let's start with the ACLE um, because JDT are hosting Ulsan HD on Tuesday, November the 5th. Well, there could be fireworks in this one. JDT facing another K-League team, having lost to Guangzhou in their last ACL E mm -hmm. game. Ulsan, of course, looking to earn their first win in the ACL E, having lost their last three. Uh, as they are the host, JDT, let, let's. Uh, what can you tell us about them? How's their recent form, and uh, what was their performance like against Guangzhou? Do you think? Uh, well, you'll be shocked by this. They're doing well domestically. They're doing quite well domestically. Uh, they won four nil last time out, and. If, if folks weren't listening over on the ASEAN game last time, and you're not familiar with JDT, Johor Daurul Tadzim, uh, they own the Malaysian Super League. They, they're just running away with it. Uh, and some of the records they set with their win last time out was a, a Malaysian Super League unbeaten streak record of 73 matches. <laughs> they have gone unbeaten for 73 matches in the league. And uh, they also went ahead and extended their own record of the longest unbeaten away run to 67 matches. That's been going since 2018. So it is, uh, it's as it always is, where they are just absolutely destroying everybody. But um, I think that can have a negative effect for them. Um, they do pretty well in big games domestically because they do well in every game domestically. But um, they recently had an FA Cup rematch against Selangor, and they really, I think they ran away with that one maybe a little bit more than folks were expecting. That was a 3 0. Uh, Bergson had a brace in that one to extend his lead at the top of the scoring chart. And I'll, I'll go into a little bit more of like what went wrong for Selangor when we talk about Selangor. But for JDT in that one, I think it was just really great game management. Uh, they knew how to come out and, and how to own a game when they're able to be on the front foot. And that's where things, I think, went wrong for them against Guangzhou. Guangzhou came out and they're like, we're not afraid of you. And they punched him in the mouth. You know, In seven minutes, Asani had two goals on the board. So I think that JDT don't really have a lot of experience reacting that way. They don't know... They don't have a lot of real game time experience with that. And I think you saw that in the Guangzhou match, right? The first goal, that's just ridiculous. Like, Asani, I don't know what he's doing in ACL. I don't know what they're feeding him before those games, but keep it up. Because, you know, as, as we're looking at the ACL elite, it's like, ooh, Guangzhou, you know, this might be tough. But the, they just keep backing it up, and they just keep doing it in that competition. And, and he's been outstanding. So that first goal, he's got a half an inch of space and just puts in a ridiculous shot. Okay, great. But the second one, I think that's a perfect example of JDT being too comfortable. The, the, you just had too much time on the ball and Asani comes in, picks it out one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and does what he does and slots that one away. Where it, And I think that that's kind of showing where JDT and Faraz and that one specifically is just used to having more time. You know, he's at the center line He's not expecting a lot of pressure there because most teams, as we're familiar with from the days when we were talking about Jumbook dominating the league, most teams will just sit back against JDT and try to absorb pressure. And much like we talked about with Jumbook when they were dominant, surprise, surprise, that doesn't work. So for Guangzhou, I think that they came out and they really showed the formula to beat JDT, which is to just go out and attack them because they, they're not used to it at all. And I think especially when you see this across the Malaysian Super League, unfortunately, if a team goes down, they usually struggle to react. They don't know how to kind of come back from that. And for JDT, it's new territory for them. <laughs> like they don't lose games and they very rarely go, even go down a goal in a game. So it's one where like, I think their domestic dominance is kind of hindering them when it comes to this competition, because they're not, they're big game players. They've played in these competitions before, but when every week, sometimes twice a week, you're going out and every team's like, oh God, please don't hurt me. And then you come in against a team like Mighty Mighty Guangzhou who are in this competition for the first time, but like, they're not gonna be afraid of you and they're gonna come out and play that way. So I think for JDT, that's, that's something that they really need to look out for in this one because 
Ulsan is kind of a decent team if you're into winning championships. Uh, so I, I don't think that they're going to come out and uh, and try to play counterattacking football. I don't expect that from Ulsan. So I think for JDT, they need to kind of sit back and maybe absorb pressure for the first 10, 15 minutes, keep it scoreless, and then try to play their game and, and kind of almost study their own opposition uh, of how to approach Ulsan because it's going to be JDT. I think they're going to have to be trying to counterattack and exploit the gaps. Yeah. Well, they are at home um, mm -hmm. against Ulsan. It's a difficult place for teams to go. Um, who should Ulsan be keeping an eye on as, as the danger men? Yeah. I mean, it, I think for folks that are new to Malaysian football, welcome. It's all sorts of fun. Um, Arif Ayman has to be the guy again. Uh, he scored last time out in the league. He has three goals in as many games in ACL Elite. He's 22 years old, and he's just lighting up the league. A very, very exciting young talent. And he's he's just finding the back of the net in this competition, and especially playing in front of the home crowd. Uh, I, I think he's definitely one to watch. Bergson, again, is just destroying the league. He has 16 goals and 11 appearances domestically. So he's somebody to watch out for. And also, Ulsan will... Uh, be very familiar with him. He's scored against them in previous competitions, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and then there's this guy that played for some small teams. Uh, do you know Real Madrid? Have you heard of them? Or uh, I may have. This, I may have. this Paris Saint-Germain? Um, <laughs> yeah, Jesse Rodriguez is there. Um, he, has, he doesn't have a lot of minutes in the league yet, so kind of getting his feet under him. But, that, I mean, come on. <laughs> when you've got the pedigree of those tiny little minnows over in Europe... I definitely think he's somebody to watch out for. And a, and a random one for the K-League and Korean fans, uh, Park Jun hung who's not really played in Korea much. He's mainly been based in Southeast Asia and East Asia, uh, was in Hong Kong for a bit, I believe. But uh, the former Blue Wing, who was there long enough to get the FA Cup ring, I think he played two games or something like that, and he's got the FA Cup ring. But he's, uh, he's one of the defenders for JDT there, so that's another tie-in with the K-League. But... I think one of the other things that I didn't mention that I wanted to mention about how they're going to approach this and speaking to defenders is like they're very good at tactical fouls. JDT will break down teams' attacks before they even get going. So I think that that's going to be one. And I don't think Ulsan's going to be used to that either because we know what the officiating is like in K-League and everything's given all the time, right? Whereas with this, JDT might just be frustrating them very early by taking away their opportunities to attack and maybe not getting the calls that Ulsan players are used to getting. So I think, or even if they do get called, I think it's another one where JDT is just really good at man management and game management. And that back line knows how to frustrate and quite literally disrupt. So I think that's another thing to watch out for. Yeah. Well, can they beat Ulsan this time around, you think? Um it's going to sound weird, but yeah, they usually do. They usually do. They've played each other four times in this competition, and JDT have won three of those, including the very dramatic late, late winner that they got last year in this competition, 2-1 uh, win there. And that's what I was saying about Bergson. Olson know him. He's scored against them before. Like They're very familiar. And this is, this is kind of a fun rivalry that's building in ACL really because it's a very rare one where a Southeast Asian side has the leg up and I don't I mean yeah it's still going to be considered a surprise if anybody from Southeast Asia beats the reigning K-League champions but in this one especially playing in Johor I I would not be surprised if if JDT can pull off a result here yeah fair enough um well we'll have to see how that how that one pans out because they are as you said the reigning champions they sealed the the title on Friday just gone against Gangman with a two one win so that's all out of the way there's 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 mm -hmm. probably no excuses now in terms of um, thinking oh we have to balance these three competitions one of them's wrapped up so we'll have to what see, I suppose. what the hell is happening with them in ACL though like what what, what is going on with Ulsan? it's crazy because I had a look at their stats to really try and quantify what's going wrong and it's just a below average number of shots um eighth amongst the teams from the east side of the competition their accuracy is 10th amongst teams from the east for from the east side of the competition 33.3 percent the average is 36.84 so 
They're not getting enough shots in general, and when they do, they're not very accurate. Mm. Um, they're not getting the ball in the box enough either. Touches in the in the box is uh, it's only slightly above average, but they rank seventh amongst the teams in the East. You know, deep completions. They're seventh amongst teams from the East in that metric as well. They're supposed to be one of the best teams, certainly in the East side of the competition. Mm-hmm. Not slightly above average. Not, I, I just think, I just think that they've they've with the chopping and changing they've had to do between the league and, and the ACL, mm-hmm. they lost a bit of rhythm. And and when you're playing different personnel in, in midfield, certainly in wide areas, when you've got a, basically a number nine target man, whether that be Yago Cariello or Jumin Gear, it's the same formula really. But when you haven't got the same people to try and feed these number nine type strikers. It's just not clicking. I don't think they've they've been able to forge a good relationship with each other. Um, some players are just I don't know. Maybe having a too big of a squad is having a negative effect on them. You could, could argue that most teams would be envious of having basically two players for each position, but not mm. all of them are, you know, fantastic. They're also quite an old squad as well. You yeah. know, a Kim Minu as well, for example, thirty four. He's he's been, he's played quite a lot in ACL. This season, he's been one of the players that's come in to try and do a job on the on the left wing. Ludwigsson's back fit now, um, and he scored uh, on, on Friday. So maybe we'll see things improve in that regard. But I just think they haven't really found a rhythm up front. Maybe a bit too much uh, chopping and changing, too much rotation. I, yeah, like you say, I think the rotation's playing into it. And they've been seemingly very focused on the league. And like you said, they've gone and won their third straight title. So congrats to... Hyundai for continuing to win titles in K-League. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, just stay out of it, Busan, all right? We don't want you there. <laughs> Not this year, anyway. Um, but with that, with that uh, with that title out of the way, do you see that being kind of like, a, do you think that that'll be a motivator for them in this one? Or is that going to be kind of like, hey, job's done. Uh, we won domestically. The season's over for us. We've lost three straight in this competition. What are you going to do? I think, I think they'll be relieved that they've got the title sewn up, and now they can fully focus on the ACL because they will be annoyed mm. and they'll be a little bit embarrassed that they mm. have lost three games. I know they played three very big teams. They played three Japanese teams, and it's always going to be tough, right? Um, but they are a club that's trying to position itself as as one that represents this country. Mm-hmm. Just in general, they're doing a lot of English sort of press releases now. Uh, obviously, in the build-up oh. to the to the Club World Cup, for example, that's the, that's mm-hmm. the main reason they will not want their image to be that of a weak team on the continent. Just mm. in general, they want to have a powerful brand because ultimately they want Hyundai. Hyundai Heavy, obviously, is the, is the part of Hyundai that owns Ulsan. They don't want to look weak or they don't want to look like they are just a bit of a joke team um, when they go to the Club World Cup. So they're going to have to get things right in the Champions League first. Um, Mm -hmm. I just think that if they fail to reach the knockouts, this is a really bad look for them. Really bad look. Luckily, with this this new format, there's more games and therefore there's more a bit more leeway. It's going to be difficult, but not that far behind the, the, the top eight. Right. Obviously, that you know. So they're going to have to put this game to bed, get it done, get get it won. I heard that they left to Malaysia pretty much on Friday, straight after the Ulsan game, after the uh, Gang One game. And I sent a message to uh, Boyanic, just sort of saying congratulations and stuff because we did an interview mm. early in the in the year. Uh, I was like, is it you know time to celebrate with a little beer emoji? And he's like, no, not yet. So it's like, you know, it, it sounds like. Accelerations will be kept at a minimum for okay. the league, and they're going to probably take a strong squad, I think, to um, to Malaysia. N- nothing was asked in the press conference um, with the manager about the Champions League. I, I-, I read through the whole right. transcript. I was trying to find out maybe whether there'd be some kind of hint or insight as to what kind of squad he's going to take, or or, or like you said, after now that now the league's won, can we now focus mm. on the Champions League? Nothing mm. was even asked about that. So I, I, I'm not. Re- not really sure, but the K League obviously have given them that game on a Friday, so they can have an extra day 
to mm-hmm. get ready and travel to to Malaysia and be in the best possible condition to be able to put in the performance and get this ACL campaign back on track because three losses is not a good look. They've got a team that they should beat. But we've said that before about JDT. Mm-hmm. Obviously, mm-hmm. JDT at home, obviously, are very scary. They've obviously lost to them in 2023 and 2022, I think it was. Uh, yes. Other big teams have, have lost there as well. Shanghai Shenmue only just this season. Mm-hmm. Kashima Atlas, who I think at the, at the time were the champions in 2019. They won it the year yes. before, right? So yeah. they this is obviously a, a, a very dangerous game. They can't afford to think, ah, well, it's fine. We'll, we'll we won the league now. We can we can sort of um, take it easy. I don't think so. No. I mean, as Jumbuk found out the hard way, it's not always easy to do on a rainy Wednesday night in Malaysia. No, nope, certainly not. Certainly not. So I think this it's going to be a a, a, a strong Ulsan squad, mm. and they're going to be looking to probably look at how, like you said, how Guangzhou did it. And just make sure so, that they are, uh, uh, you know, aggressive from the off. So if there's anybody that, like, used to really follow K-League but is a little bit out of it now, I don't know who's coming to mind in that reference. Uh, who would you say has been the MVP for Ulsan this year? Because Juman Gyu has really fallen off, finally got back on the scoring sheet. Um, Cho Yanu is somebody else that comes to mind. But, like, who do you think is one that folks for JDT or folks here in Southeast Asia should really be keeping an eye out for for them? It's funny because... I don't think anybody, apart from the goalkeeper, because there's a lot of conversation in the media th- 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 this past week about Choi Hanu being the MVP of the league, not even just nope. for, for Ulsan, of, of the league. Um, but I don't think, other than him, anybody has had sustained high levels of form throughout the whole year. They've had moments. There have been players okay. who've had moments and have had spells in the season. They've also had injuries to some of their mm. big players. Ludwigson is, is is one for example, so I don't I don't know. But what what I would say in terms of this game, I think the midfield battle is going to be really important because mm-hmm. they're going to need to have someone who can control the game. Um, mm-hmm. They're going to have to have someone who can dictate the tempo. Bojanic can can do that. Now I had a quick look at uh, some of the midfield partnerships and midfield combinations in the in their game so far. I think Jong Yong is going to be out injured. Uh, there's, 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 oh. there's talk here that he could be out for the season. So he's a big blow. Someone who's been sat in front of the four in a 4 1 4 1. That was against Yokohama. Uh, against Bristol Kobe, it was Jong Yong and Igu Song in a two, in a 4 2 3 1. Against Pohang in, in the league, it was uh, Korsung Bomb and Boyanic in a 4 2 3 1 as the two. Um, against Gang when it was Buranich and Korsung Bomb. I think that's what it'll be. It'll probably be more of a 4 2 3 1. If they can control the midfield and have someone like Buranich is more box to box, then they should be able to outnumber them in midfield. I think that, that, I think that was basically what they tried to do against Gang one, is outnumber them um, and have someone there as a bit of a shield. But with Jong Yong potentially out for the season, it does mean that they're going to have to think about who can be that anchor, who can sort of mm. really protect the back four. Um, so I think midfield, whoever it is that is picked to play in that central midfield area will be how Ulsan can win this match because they're going to have to control the tempo. JDT are going to be trying to do anything they can to unsettle them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be, I think, those those probably Korsungbaum and Boyanic. All right, well, to wrap up the ACLE, Guangzhou top the table, would you believe, uh, with three no. wins from three and just the 11 goals scored, seven in one game. Um, Rotterdam United are third with two wins, JDT fifth with one win, one draw and one loss. Then below the qualification line, as it's the top eight who go through, Polhang one win and Ulsan bottom to highlight teams from Kaylee and the ASEAN. So it is looking good, Ryan, for ASEAN teams to, to, to go through. It, it's wild. Um, I think it's one where looking at it ahead of time, you, you wouldn't expect Pohong and Ulsan to be the ones that are below that very generous cutoff point of eight teams out of 12. Um, but I think the big thing here is that uh, Budiram and JDT are going to need to stay strong at home. That's always the case for them in international competitions. But teams like Ulsan and Pohong getting off to a slow start, I think is also a really big boost for these teams especially given the timing of this competition as AFC has transitioned into the European calendar, 
And for the record, I still am not in favor of K-League doing it. I'm not in favor of J-League doing it. I'm not in favor of any country that has winter doing it. I, it just doesn't make sense. And also, we don't need every football final in the world in May. It's boring. I don't want it. Like I like the fact that Ulsan just won the title now, and it's wrapping up now. It's fun having competitions at different times. But I understand why the shift has been made, and I understand why a lot of the Southeast Asian leagues have made that shift. Thai League made that shift with this in mind. So now, Buriram and all of the other Thai teams that are in ACL2, their seasons are just getting going. They're just finding their rhythm so that when the next ACL Elite match day comes up, Ulsan's done. They can try to train against a couple of teams and do this and that and the other, but Buriram, JDT, the other Southeast Asian sides, again, in ACL2 and even here in ACL Elite, they're going to be 15, 20, 25 games into their season and really finding their rhythm. So I think with the start that Buriram and JDT have got off to in Elite, it's looking really good for them. Yeah, and I fully agree with you with the, the calendar. It's just an awkward time of the year for K-League teams because mm -hmm. things are getting serious in K-League at this point in the campaign. And Polhang, especially when ACLE began, things were getting a little bit rocky for them. Um, form yeah. started to dip. They, they, they're now obviously out of the title race. So they, 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 they fell out of it about a month ago. And they had to balance it. They had to sort of rotate things. And it's sort of not doing the competition the justice that it deserves. And it's not really... The Kelly teams aren't really performing as best as they can. Um, just because they have to they have to prioritize the league, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, <laughs>